So he's a prime target right there. So I think this card is going to be playable. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to put it. But it might be in a brand new deck I'll, I'll make up or something. Uh, where was I next? Okay. <coughs> okay. Rootbender. When an action targets Gar Garnal Rootbender, draw a card. I'm sorry about the names, guys. I'm sure. Whatever. I am Groot. Yeah, I ain't gonna play this. This depends too much on my opponent. Of course, you could hit it with your own Firebolt to draw a card if your super needs to. But, out of five Magicka, they're better cards. This card just seems lackluster. I'm probably missing something, but it seems very... Because it says when, a, when an action targets it. Like, if it didn't say that... I would be for this card because if that means that you could use ice storm you can play this on turn five right then you can play ice storm and then you get to draw a card and it stays alive that would be a fantastic card but because it has to be targeted is the downfall of this card that's the biggest issue with this because then you're expecting your opponents to use like lightning bolts curses on this this is not the biggest start out there by turn but you know by the time you have five magicka you could already have very powerful creatures with better stats than this already. I mean, like, just like if you if you're talking about like endurance, let's say let's just combo with an endurance. Let's, for example, right? Turn four. Well, turn three, you get a freaking <laughs> the young mammoth. But look, and that's four four breakthrough. Turn four, you get five five. So I mean, like, if we want to go over to over here like this there's, there's other cards you could play for four magicka and then you know that has pretty good stats that i would play over it and then if you really want to talk about five magicka yeah there's way better stuff you could be playing a five magicka rather than playing that I'm not, it's not a horrible five magicka card for sure but i would rather play her i would rather play thieves of dream i'd rather well not <laughs> the text you know this is other thing double ganger just Ah, sure. Probably has this place somewhere. Okay. I saw this one. I think I saw this one on Twitter. Yeah, sacrifice a creature to summon a top creature from your deck. <clears throat> if there's a new card that lets you decide what creature is on the top of your deck specifically, yeah. This would be super useful. Definitely super useful. It has its uses. People will play it in the right deck. It's not going to be used in a lot of decks, but there will be decks that use it. I won't discount it at all. Seven Flesh Golem. Good name. Cool effects as well. When Seed and Flesh Golem attacks, deal damage equal to its power to all enemy creatures in this lane. Hmm. So, I don't like the fact that it's an 8 Magicka card with no summon effects. And to get the most useful use out of this, you would need to give it like lethal, drain. I don't know. Like it. This is like having a creature that kind of like an unstoppable rage <laughs> when it attacks because it attacks every creature in the lane. No, enemy creatures. Enemy, all enemy creatures in the lane. It's not even all creatures, so it's not even as powerful as unstoppable rage. And why I say that, that's, that's key. Because, well, on top of a rage, if you give a creature um, drain and you attack your own creatures, that's, that's super powerful. I had a guy come back from one health even though i shackled his creatures right he used everything he could to just he kept playing creatures creatures and he had enough magicka playing one cost creatures and just shackled his creatures and just gave himself enough health to come back and just like come on now i gotta will your health down by 20 or something whatever the hell it was and i was like Ugh, as an aggro deck this is kind of just annoying so yeah that's the situation for that but this card doesn't seem as viable I will think people would experiment with it, but if you have, it's just the cost for the effect doesn't seem reasonable. I would have dropped it down to a seven if it was a seven, and then you're playing it where Thieves Guild Recruit could have dropped it down to a six, 
and then you could combo with some other cards, sure, but I'm, 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 I'm guessing this is going to not see a lot of play. I'm just really feeling like this is a bad card. I'll just say it. I, I feel like this is a bad card. It is what it is. All right, guys. Let me get some water on my pulse for a second. <laughs> Been too long since I've done a video that I haven't even got used to just sitting here making a video for this long. But read right back. You guys won't even know it's to cut. All right, guys. I'm back. I needed some water. I haven't been here doing a video for a while. Throat got a little dry. <clears throat> Sorry about that. All right. Where's my headphones? My earbuds are looking kind of haggard, kind of ripped right there. So, yeah, like, I need new ones. God damn it. Whatever. If you guys know if any brands of really durable earbuds, let me know. Okay. Let's take a look. Shining Saint. One, okay. Yeah, Shining Saint. Let's see. Give a creature minus two and minus zero this turn. It loses cover. Can I say this card's effect around her body is cool? I like the shimmering effect. <laughs> Usability wise? The losing cover is almost more important, probably, but I don't know. It doesn't seem proper for a token deck, but maybe I'm oh, maybe it's a uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's a, it's questionable. Lose cover. Of course, a minus two is helpful. It's, I'm, I can't say it's not, but I'm not sure yet. The cost is right. The cost is fine. The stats are fine. The effect is questionable for the deck you will put this in. Maybe it's more meant for a control deck. That okay? Yeah, maybe you put that in a control deck. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Wow. Okay. The weather's not great. Got a little bit of sniffles. Golden Initiate, Prophecy Drain. Good cost for a Prophecy card with Drain. Because it's a three cost and it has um, Drain on it and it's three three, I think this makes it a very usable Prophecy card. That's what I like about this. It's just that if you get this in your hand early on, it's so it's super playable. You can put this down. And you can play it. This card should be played in a token deck just fine. If you needed a way to get health in a token deck, you could put this in there. So I'm going to say this is a very playable prophecy card. I like it. Lesson of the Grove. Gain two health for each friendly creature. Nope, 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 nope. Nope. Not for four magic, nope. <laughs> Like, of course, there's ways to win with this. Use that ring card where you gain health, you deal damage to your opponent. But, I mean, it's going to be fun for decks that base around always trying to drain or gain health. Great. It's another way for you. It's another way to gain health. I don't blame them for adding, adding it in. Another unique way to do it. But I don't like the cost. So I don't see myself playing it too often outside of decks built around a strategy that could incorporate this pretty well. Which is most cards anyways. Really trying not to clear my throat. Let me just mute my mic and do it. <coughs> Wait, my mic didn't pause. <laughs> I hope my mic wasn't muted all this time. I really hope it was not. Hey, my mic was muted all this time. I'm going to go nuts. <laughs> Alright. Let me press this one. I think I think I would have noticed the flashing light. I think I would have noticed it. <laughs> anyway, let's keep on going. You may discard a card to summon a 2-2, the trooper, regarding the other lane. Oh, yeah. I tried this card out before. I didn't think it was... Uh, the worst so it gives you the ability to summon a card and discard a card which is useful throwing cards in your graveyard like one of my favorite things 
when I used to play a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh was, you know, like just milling cards, like mill decks or uh, putting cards in your graveyard just to summon them later. Or uh, maybe pulling the mill cards when it's out. But yeah, I think this card has its places. Not great, but not bad. Okay, Swamp Mother and Barwall. Yeah, if it's when you summon a Swamp Mother, she automatically summons this as well. Oh, I real I read it now. Okay, I'm an idiot. It tells you exactly what it does. Oh, uh, I'm so stupid. It says double. When you draw this, it splits into two cards. You could play them both. You could play both cards. Oh, that's how the double effect works. Why didn't I just look to the left and read it? So dumb. So it is two cards. So when you draw the card, it just splits into two cards and then you can play them separately. Then hmm. this is a bad card then. Cause this is a five magica. You would have to already hope that your board is pretty packed up, right? He gets plus one, 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 one. So at maximum, <coughs> four, seven. It could get, at maximum, it could gain seven strength, right? Making it eight, eight at turn four. Great in theory. Cause all right, let's see. Uh, you know, however you do it. Let me just say you, you uh, by turn four, so you have four magicka, you, have full lanes. Let's say your opponent gave you cards with Night Mother. Let's play you, you play Imperials. You know, you get those Imperial Grunts out there through Scout and Patrol. Like, you know, the first turn, you, you know, you break the Ring of Magic of Scout Patrol, Scout Patrol, boom. Two creatures in both lanes. Your opponent gives you Imperial Grunts. So, turn four, you play this. Now you have this, get the maximum value out of it, and then. You see your opponent turns and they remove it with a piercing javelin or any other removal card or they shackle it. It's just like, I, I, maybe I'm just missing it. Maybe I'm missing it. It seems a like too much investment to get the most effect out of this for its magical cost. It's a funny how one magical difference could make this so much more playable. If this was a three magical cost, and you played this while you had six Magicka, you can make some interesting plays. You definitely could do some things with this because you could play this from hand and play enough creatures with it, scouting patrols. Like I said, lots of Northern Firebrands. You can play enough cards with it to make it get powered up quickly enough that your opponent, now that your opponent has to deal with it because you just did all this from your hand, next turn you put it on a Divine Fervor. Guys, if I ever say Divine Favor, it's just what I would... I, that's why I say something, but Divine Fervor, I do know that's what it's called, play Divine Fervor, then sure. Now all the other creatures are still power, powered up, and now your opponent really has to deal with this or shackle it. But at four, eh. And the ball wall part of it is meh. <laughs> Overall, it's a bad card. There, I said it. I said it. Eh. Prove me wrong. Make a good deck with it. <laughs> Heretic Conjurer. Cool effect behind him. I see him conjuring something coming. Oof, that's a cool damn effect, man. Face, the art on this card is... The art on this card is phenomenal. This might be my favorite art of the whole entire set, man. The face, everything from the regular version to the premium. Real nice stuff. Oh, let me read what it does. I'm so impressed by the art. I'm not even talking about the card itself. All right, it's High Elf, a 2-3 guard. Not great stats. Looking at it, but let's see its ability. Guard, Pillifer. Creatures you have, creatures you summon this turn are transformed into a random Didra. So you have to Pillifer to have this effect happen. <coughs> So, if I'm understanding how this card works, you can't use this card after the fact. This means that this card needs to already be on the field. Like, you can't... Alright, so you can summon a creature, right? 
Then, uh, play this card. Let's say you have 12 magic. So, you ha you summon a creature. Who cares what it is? No let's summon a Northern Firebrand. It attacks, right? You summon this. And you have Mundestone out. It gets charged. And you attack. That Northern Firebrand does not turn into a random creature because it, are, it was summoned before this card was on, in play, if I'm understanding this correctly. This card would actually already have to be in play. You get the pillar for effect. Now every creature you summon after the fact now gets transformed into a random one. So that's how I figured this works. Probably it's very obvious to anybody who's read this and played this game for a long time, but sometimes I like to break things down for maybe some newer players out there. So if you're new, that's probably exactly as how it's going to actually work. And I don't get it to Act 3, so I'll have a while before I even get a chance to try it out. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Duke of Mana. Wood Elf. Guy looks like a gangster. Alright. Summon. This lane becomes a mania. Okay, at the start of each player's turn, if you, they have the creature with the highest health in this lane, they draw a card. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I mean, with seven health, sure. If you're playing a deck around that, I could see the use. All right, Suduster Dark Fire. And her whip is definitely on fire. Like she's just gonna seduce you to burn you. Stay away. <laughs> choose a cost. Uh, your opponent can uh, choose a yeah. Choose a cost. Your opponent cannot play cards with the. Wow. Interesting limiter. Alright, so the odds of this combo ever coming into play is so slim, but it's doable. Let's 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 talk. Seducer along with our good old pal <coughs> uh bed uh what is it? The scam. So and you choose three. So now any card under one I mean, like, you know, all those cards that are 0, 1, 2, or 3 can't be played, if I'm understanding this correctly, right? Am I, am I crazy in assuming that's how this actually would work? Like, you would just eliminate a whole bunch of cards from your opponent being able to play them from hand. Remember, once again, your opponent could steal some of those cards from effects directly out of their deck or from the graveyard. If I understand, by playing a card, you mean playing it from your hand. Oh, man. And I mean, it's, like I said, it's not even an impossible play. This is a seven uh, magical card, and this is a three magical card. You can play this together at the exact same time. If you're playing this in... Hold on, hold on. Let me think. Yeah, you could play it in a tri-attribute tri deck. <coughs> All right. <coughs> Hold up, guys. I need to remember this, so... This is something I'm just going to have to... Oh, damn, I don't have them yet. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> yo, I'm just so excited to try this. I'm like, yo, we're going we're gonna to be like, bam, throw you up in there. Bam, throw her up in there. And then throw some rank up, ramp up in this bitch. Like, you know, just go go full go full with it and just see where we go. Because I'm like, yo, just ramp up real quickly. See if you could get this out. And see, just have fun. Now, back to actually reviewing this card. Reviewing the card, it's, it's very situational. Like, it could definitely counter your opponent's ability to use a lot of two drops. Like, you know, two magical cost cards, which is very common these days. Like, you know, opponents want to put out some cards very quickly. And aggro decks to magic is very key. So I can see that this being valuable is going to stop counteracting that. But 
this is gonna be most fun and like decks that are gonna be trying to control is it a great card i'm gonna say no i'm gonna say absolutely not i don't think it's a great card it's gonna be a fun card to play with but overall it's, it's a very situational card it's gonna be good for tournaments and things like that where you kind of idea what your opponent's gonna do but <clears throat> in random play it's gonna be hard to predict exactly what magicka cost you're gonna want to block in, in general if i just had to recommend it if you're gonna play something like this in your deck pick two magicka pick two just start off with two magicka then after two magicka use four you want to go two four five those are the magicka costs you will usually i would say you want to block now if you're thinking your if your opponent is playing if you see what you're playing playing if they're playing a scout deck then obviously some late game cards would work out quite well or if you play see them going to be playing like um Oh man, I haven't played this card in so long now that I forgot its name. It used to be a champion of everybody's deck. Manticora. <laughs> Damn, that's it's a sad day when you don't remember Manticora's name. But yeah, him losing guard did definitely affect it for me personally. Still a good card because you played it in the Shadow Lane now. I already talked about that before. But um You could be 10 to stop out Manticora or a few other legendary cards that cost 10. So, you know, there is there is a there is room there, but if other than all right, so it's two, four, five, then I would do seven, because seven would stop stuff like giant, you know, which is a heavily playable card right there. Uh, it would stop, <clears throat> it would stop this. I see this card being played more, spirit knives, so there's stuff like that. It would stop. I would almost say eight, but I don't think Uncarno's. It's a good card, but. Uh, eight and eight is not such a big threat, but I think seven is more viable. Arrest, Jara. So there are definitely s magicas you can stop. Oh, stopping Nick set seven would be fun as well. But once again, the match has to be going on long enough to take the best advantage of that. Anyways, that's the whole thing to it. But we could go back to talking about the owl cards in general, not just focus so much on that one card. I did definitely say this would be a long video. I really do hope that the recording comes out all right. All right, and um, here we go. <clears throat> so far, though, overall, eh, most of these cards are meh, and you really gotta build around it. So I don't think it's gonna be the so far hugest meta change ever, but still very enjoyable set of cards i think they will be but it's more about people playing with them and having like you know actually using these new cards but we'll see summon and pilfer okay uh summon a random willpower creature with cost of three or less now this this card is more useful than the last one we just clearly saw because you summon this it gives you a Random willpower creature for three costs or less and if you if let's say if you really want to be Pacific if you purposely put your Your deck so you have a limited amount of three cost creatures So, you know what you have a good chance of what you're gonna get Let's say you only have six of them like you know two copies two three have two of the same cards three Wow, my fucking throat is killing me. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. All right. You have two cards, right? Different cards, but three copies of those cards. Sorry about that. All right, and then you pilfer, you get another card as well. So I think it's a useful card. If you could get charge on this, it would be vastly great. <laughs> like, wow. It'd be good if you get charge when it um, summons it. I'm trying to think right now while I'm pausing and thinking of how I would play this card. Like, what deck would I want to play it in? Because um, it's not going to be in a token deck, but... Just ideas. I wonder how this would do in an arena. No, it wouldn't be good enough. Uh, interesting. Okay. Oh, yeah. This is a card I like a lot. I like this card so much. This is one of the cards we could have tried. I was able to try out early because of those um other All the Madness cards. And I like it. Simple. Charge. Yeah. I'm with it. Good card. <laughs> I don't really don't got much else to say about it. I think it's a good card <clears throat> from my experience. Whew. 
creature lethal this turn. Complete trash. This is this is this is trash. Yeah, it's great. You get two cards in your hand. But I guess well, I mean the one thing I can say about this, these double cards, the the only thing that makes them not trash is you get in two cards for one draw. So having it in your deck in that sense has uses and giving the creature lethal for two magic is not bad but just that this turn thing is kind of annoying and this being a, a four six lethal at six magicka i guess because you're getting two cards for once they could make them too overpowered God damn it, am I kind of disappointed in this double thing right now. Like, I will, I'm, I'm probably looking at this wrong. A little bit of premium version. <clears throat> damn it, man. <clears throat> the weather was bad today. Oh, this looks awesome. <laughs> it's messed up. It's hurting a Khajiit, but no, poor cat. Well, it looks great. Don't they know about Nyx? Do they not know that Nyx exists? What is this? What is Legends? What is this madness? Is what? Sacrifice a creature to gain Magicka, gain to gain Magicka. This turn equal to its power. Agility is who? Yo, that Khajiit got hit with that lightning bolt and it paid off because top card of this showcase so far. This card is so viable, it's unbelievable. In ramp decks, in decks that you just need that extra little push, there's so much use for this card. It like. This is gonna be a staple. Like if I if I'm incorrect that this card is gonna be a staple in many many decks that features agility, I'm gonna be so surprised. And if, if this card is not in almost in every deck that plays Nyx or at least one or two copies, I'm not saying you need a full set of threes because I don't think you might be need a full set of threes. But if you could take advantage of all that magic, if you have if you have the deck with the ramp possibilities along with the drawing possibilities. What? This card is looks great. Top card from the set so far. Definitely top. When do I unlock that? Act two. Alright. Move a friendly creature. Give it um plus one one for each uh enemy creatures in this lane. Hmm. Very cool looking card. The sword looks like a badass. Um, I can't open my door right now, even though I do have a package common some flex tape <laughs> some family uh needed to <laughs> to fix some stuff um, i need a tripod for my webcam because you guys how how this webcam is being held up right now it is literally on top of a pop figured tape on top of it as a tripod i am not joking to you it's some ghetto janky ass stuff um <laughs> uh, So you, get, you move a friendly creature, you gave it plus four at most. Two costs. I can see this in the archer decks. You could combo this with um, Unstoppable Rage. <clears throat> I already see it happening. Ten magic of play. You have a creature down with breakthrough. You move the creature into the left lane. Let's say your opponent has all the creatures. No, let's say you have your creature in the left lane open. Your opponent put all the creatures in the shadow lane. You move them over to the right. They get plus four. Swing out that unstoppable rage. Win the match. Definitely see it happening. Yeah, it's okay card. Okay, uh, reduce the cost of the top card of your deck by three. 
could be highly usable 